Ah, the world of Pokemon. Full of memorable and colourful creatures we've loved since our childhood, and we still love to this day. And after around two whole decades later, it's amazing how we're still able to remember every single one of these creatures. Well, most of them at least. You see, when it was just 151 Pokemon, it was pretty easy to remember every single Pokemon, considering the main objective of Pokemon was to... However, that number has now risen to a whopping 721, not including Mega Evolutions of course, and with over 700 different creatures to capture, there's bound to be some that we missed out. So today, I'm going to be counting down what in my opinion are the top 10 most forgettable Pokemon. Which, ironically, are going to become less forgettable considering I'm about to remind you of these pokes, surely. So making a list of the 10 most forgettable Pokemon isn't exactly the easiest top 10 list to make, considering that not only do I have to remember the Pokemon in order to put it on the list, but if I do remember the Pokemon, they technically shouldn't qualify for the list. So because of this, there's a good chance that not everyone will agree with some of the choices on this list, mainly because this is based on what I personally find forgettable. Hell, there's a good chance that some of these Pokemon are actually someone else's favourite Pokemon. So to make this list as fair as possible, I've looked up every single Pokemon in the game so far and based my picks on each Pokemon's in-game roles, how much they've been used in the competitive scene, as well as how memorable they were in the anime. So Pokemon like Lickitung, Snowrunt and Carnivine... Well done guys, you dodged a bullet. I'll also be taking into account how popular and unpopular each Pokemon is. So for example, Pokemon like Trubbish and Stunfisk won't be on the list thanks to their universal hate. So because of these reasons, don't expect much variety in the generations as it's obvious that most of the choices are going to be from newer generations. So before we finally start this list, let's quickly look at some honourable mentions. Or in this case, dishonourable. All these Pokemon just missed out on the list. I won't talk about all of them since there are quite a few, but I'll quickly mention some. Delcati, completely useless in battle and completely overshadowed by its pre-evolution. Mantike, pretty much the same reason as Delcati, except with its regular evolution. Tangler, ever taken the 151 Pokemon challenge? Well, if you're like me, there's a good chance that you miss Tangler. Unpheasant, the male form saves it from getting on the list, but the female form gets it a mention. Ariados, because when I was once told to think of a spider Pokemon, the only Pokemon I could think of was Galvantula. And that's a pretty bad sign if you're a Gem 2 Pokemon getting overshadowed by a Gen 5 Pokemon. And lastly, Farfetch'd. Because every time I've asked someone to name every bird Pokemon from Gen 1, almost every person I ask forgets about Farfetch'd. This made it a very tempting choice for the number 10 spot. Plus, I really wanted a Gen 1 Pokemon on the list. But I decided not to put it on the list mainly because I personally find Tangler to be the more forgettable Generation 1 Pokemon and I found 10 more Pokemon that I find even more forgettable than Tangler. Alright, this intro has gone long enough, let's finally get on with this list before I forget what's on the list. Number 10. Chingling. For the most part, baby Pokemon are just a complete waste of space, with a lot of them getting tossed aside pretty easily, and in my opinion, Chingling is the most forgettable of the bunch. Its evolution, Chimeco, would have probably got a mention or even shared a spot with Chingling if it wasn't for the anime. But aside from that, being a baby Pokemon of a Pokemon that's already not that memorable in the first place is a pretty bad sign. I don't see this thing on any cutest Pokemon videos, mainly because I guess people don't find a living, breathing bell that cute, or they just forgot about it. I only vaguely remember Chingling from one anime episode, but what probably hurts it the most is that it was introduced in a generation that introduced multiple baby Pokemon and multiple new evolutions. Plus, it's just a bell. I'm already not a fan of Pokemon that are designed of man-made objects, so it kind of makes sense that this Pokemon just slipped my mind. However, the anime episodes that Chingling did appear in did have three of them, so I guess that's one reason why it's at the bottom of the list. Number 9. Fion. Who'd have thought a legendary would have been on the list? Hang on. Fiona is a legendary? It has the exact same stats as Glalie. Anyway, not only is Fiona probably the worst legendary Pokemon in the entire game, its design is almost identical to Manaphy's. Even the colours for the shiny form are pretty much the same. There is absolutely no reason to use Fiona over Manaphy, ever. Worse stats, same ability, even worse move pull. It doesn't even get the effect of Eevee Light since Fiona doesn't even evolve into Manaphy. Also, the only way to obtain Fiona in the games is to breed a Manaphy with a Ditto. How the hell is anyone supposed to figure that out without help from like the internet to help to obtain Fiona, considering it's a kind of rule that legendaries are not supposed to be able to breed. 
The anime doesn't help Fiona either. It appeared in one episode, whereas Manaphy not only appeared in more anime episodes, but it had a whole movie where it was the star Pokemon. Unfortunately for Fionn, people just seem to forget this thing exists. You're never going to see it in competitive since it's completely inferior to Manaphy in pretty much every way and wasn't even really memorable in the anime. I honestly still cannot believe this Pokemon is actually an official legendary. Number 8. Stantler. To me, Stantler is just a stupid looking deer. There's pretty much nothing that makes it stand out except its stupid face and its... What the f*** is that? What the hell is that? I'm guessing it's its tail, but it just looks like its ass has been inflated. All jokes aside, this is probably one of the boringest Pokemon designs. It's not only horrible and competitive, but for the amount of anime appearances it's had, I can't remember any. And did anyone use Stantler on their team? Anyone? I mean, the only reason I'd see anyone bothering to catch this thing, bearing in mind they actually remembered to catch it, is if they ran into a shiny sap. What the f*** is that? That is one nasty looking shiny. For a Pokemon from the second generation, there's close to nothing going for it. A boring design, no memorable moments in anything, and pretty much no good reason to ever use this thing in battle. Being from Gen 2 is probably the only thing saving Stantler from being any higher on the list. Number 7. Ducklet and Swanner. The 5th generation introduced more Pokemon than any other generation, which unfortunately means that the 5th generation is most likely going to have more forgettable Pokemon than the other generations. Unless, of course, the designs of the Pokemon from the 5th gen are interesting, cool looking, or really good and competitive. Having an extremely simplistic design and pretty bad stats meaning no competitive use means that only the anime can save Ducklet and Swanner. And unfortunately, I have not seen every single black and white anime episode, but for all the episodes I have seen, I can't remember any memorable moments with either Ducklet or Swanner. Now, you can argue that Ducklet's design is more detailed than, say, Psyduck. The difference is, everyone remembers Misty Psyduck. Ducklet to me just reminds me of a rubber duck, except blue. Swanner, in my opinion, does have quite a nice design, but it's also pretty easy to overlook. I mean, Ducklet is at least blue. Swanner just looks a bit too much like an actual swan with not enough unique features. And the fact that it's an extremely simple design released in a generation that introduced more Pokemon than any other generation makes it pretty difficult for Swanner to stand out. Also, Ducklet? Swanner? They could have at least had names that stood out instead of names that are about as simple as their designs. Number 6. Hmm, let's see. What other designs can we have for new Pokemon in the new generation? Hmm, let's see. Well, uh, we've got a uh, trash, uh, an ice cream, a candle. <gasps> I've got it! Let's make a fire ant eater! Ooh, that sounds pretty cool. With no evolutions! Oh, uh, well, we'd have to make it stronger. With extremely meh stats! Uh, I don't think that's the best idea. That can only be obtained in one area near the end of the yeah, game! Well, shouldn't we try and make this Pokemon Do get? it! Uh, okay. Poor Heatmore. It's actually one of the few Pokemon that I kind of feel sorry for. I think the main reason Heatmore doesn't get much attention, apart from its pretty underwhelming stats, is because it's right at the end of the Unova decks, as well as only being available right near the end of the game. By that time, we pretty much already got our teams ready for the Elite Four, so we didn't want to spend any more time training another Pokemon. Now some may argue that Durant would also suffer a similar fate, since it's also not available till near the end of Black and White, not having any notable anime appearances as well, but I've actually seen Durant being used in competitive before, as well as hilariously having its hidden ability as Truant. I mean come on, this has to be a troll by Game Freak. Truant? As a hidden ability? You know, that ability that single-handedly makes Slacking, a Pokemon with legendary tier stats, kind of useless in competitive? Everyone thought that it was a troll that Durant's hidden ability was going to be one that made it even more useless than Slacken. But it turns out that Durant could actually learn entrainment, meaning that Durant could also put Truant onto the opponent's Pokemon. So for these reasons, Durant becomes a slightly more memorable Pokemon. But poor Heatmore didn't get any sort of treatment to make people remember it more than they already did. Number 5. Finneon and Lumineon. Out of every Pokemon type, water is the most common. Which makes sense since the oceans are bound to be full of sea creatures, so there's bound to be multiple fish Pokemon. 
So if you're going to base a Pokemon off of something as common as a fish, it would be best if you designed it to make the fish look good and stand out, or at least make it good in battle. Finion and Luminion, like Swanner, have hardly anything going for them to make them stand out from an actual fish. Now the Diamond and Pearl anime saga, I did actually manage to watch close to every episode, and I can't remember a single episode with any of these Pokemon in it. Apparently Zoe, one of Dawn's rivals, had one. Since when? I've never had it on my team, I've never seen it on anyone else's team, and probably never will, considering that, surprise surprise, these fish are terrible and competitive. It does get Swift Swim, but so does Love Disc, and Love Disc is at least remembered for how terrible it is, and for its pretty silly design. Finion and Luminion are just too generic. That's the word. Generic. Number 4. Basculin. Oh look, it's another fish Pokemon! In fact, there's two of them. Why are there two of them? I have no damn clue. Basculin was actually the last Pokemon I added to the list, and originally I was going to put it low on the list until I remembered about its second form. Whenever I think of Basculin now, I almost always forget about the blue form. The red form I don't find quite as forgettable because I do occasionally chain fish, and I've actually caught a shiny red stripe Basculin. Oh wow, look at that shiny form! I bet Game Freak spent ages thinking of that. Well, at least it's better than Shiny Sandler. Stat-wise, its stats surprisingly aren't as sucky as the majority of the list, but I've still never faced one in battle. But this one is getting a spot higher than Finion and Luminion, mainly because Basculin was released a generation later. It suffers from very similar problems, like being a fish, never being seen in battle, no notable anime appearances, and, well, I guess Luminion at least has an evolution line. Basculin has no evolution line, just two forms that pretty much look the same bar the eyes and the stripe colour. But the worst part for Basculin is that it's just a bland fish design that was introduced in a generation that introduced more Pokemon than any other generation. Honestly, I could easily swap Luminion and Basculin around since more people might find Luminion more forgettable. But for now, Basculin gets the number 4 spot. Number 3. Sigilyph. You know what, I was wrong. Basculin wasn't the last Pokemon I added to the list. Sigilyph was. What even is Sigilyph anyway? Well, apparently it's based off Geoglyph or Nazca lines, designs that are produced in the ground. Well, whatever it is, it's yet another single evolution Pokemon that has no notable anime appearances. Now, I almost wasn't going to put this Pokemon on the list and just give it a mention instead, considering I've actually seen it being used in battle before. Not many times, but more than the other Pokemon on this list. Since its stats are actually somewhat usable, and it's actually one of the very few Pokemon that can actually boost both defences with cosmic power and use stored power. However, it's still highly likely that people haven't run into it since it's still very rarely used in battle. But in the main game, the only area that you could encounter Sigilyph, you had a mere 10% chance to encounter one, meaning it's highly likely that the majority of people who played through Black and White didn't even run into one, let alone have one on their team. You still may have bumped into a Finion or a Basculin while surfing or fishing, but one area with a 10% encounter rate? That's definitely good enough in my books to get third place for forgettability. Number 2. Elgium and Behium. Where do I start with these two? Well, the reason for Elgium and Behium being this high on the list is pretty funny. So here's some fun Pokemon trivia for you. Back in the Gen 5 games, TM51 was Ally Switch, and both Elgium and Behium were able to learn it. However, when the 6th generation was introduced with X and Y, TM51 became Steelwing, so obviously when transitioning from Gen 5 to 6, Game Freak would have made it so that all Pokemon that couldn't learn Steelwing before, that could learn Ally Switch, wouldn't be able to learn Steelwing anymore. But Game Freak for some reason didn't change Elgium or Behem. So when Auras came out, you'd think that Game Freak would have fixed this mistake. I mean, how silly would it look for a Pokemon that couldn't even learn Steelwing in the 5th generation games, that don't even have wings, suddenly be able to learn it in the next generation? I'm sure Game Freak wouldn't be that stupid. So yes, if you really wanted to, you can right now teach your Elgium or Behem Steelwing if you really wanted to. As for the anime, Elgium and Behem have only had a handful of appearances between them, and stat-wise, Behem is pretty decent, but like most of the pokes on this list, I've never faced one. But if you're considering running one, remember, it gets Steelwing! Hmm, I wonder what Behem did sound like in the anime. I'm guessing it had like a robot style or alien style voice, something that sounded cool. Maybe something that sounded like... It's Behem! Behem!
Now before we get to the number one spot, let's quickly run through numbers 10 through 2. Number 10 was... Um... Um... It, it, uh, fuck it, number one. Number one. Do any of you remember that? Who's that Pokemon? Minigame that was supposed to keep the kids who watched the show busy while the show took a break. They'd always be super easy. Which one of these Pokemon evolves into Survivor? If you chose Arbok, you were right. Chalk. Or sometimes completely stupid. So, let's play a game of Who's That Pokemon right now. Ready? Who's That Pokemon? Now obviously people who've seen other forgettable Pokemon lists, or who love the hell out of Gen 5, will know what this Pokemon is. As for the people who aren't too familiar with the 5th generation, I can almost guarantee these people will either have no clue what this Pokemon is, or be struggling. I know. For those of you who do know what this Pokemon is, let's do some Pokemon trivia. What are these Pokemon's abilities? What are its stats like? Where in the games can you find one? What does its shiny form look like? What did it do in the anime? Well, if you haven't guessed it yet, my number one pick for the most forgettable Pokemon is, of course, Maractus. To some people, this might just seem like a super obvious pick, and in a way, Maractus is almost becoming a slightly more memorable Pokemon because it's always referred to as that Pokemon that everyone forgets. But that, of course, is one of the main reasons why Maractus is number one. It's so forgettable. When I came across it looking through the national decks at one point, I completely forgot this thing existed. I honestly thought I had never seen it before. Battles? Never faced one. Anime? Never seen it. Wild? If I did encounter it, I completely forgot that I came across it. And chances are I probably didn't even encounter it considering it's only available in one area in the game and like Sigalith, that area has a 10% encounter rate. You're more likely to land a one hit KO move than find this thing in the wild. I think I can safely say this is the most consistent Pokemon when it comes to forgettable Pokemon lists. I have never seen it on any other Pokemon list, probably because no one remembers to put it on their lists, and if someone by any chance didn't put Maractus on their most forgettable list, they must have forgot about it. When I was making this list, I moved every Pokemon on the list around, even some Pokemon that were in the dishonorable mentions. Everyone except for Maractus. I knew for a fact this had to be number one, and it still is. In my opinion, Maractus is easily the number one most forgettable Pokemon. Now let me just make it clear, I don't actually dislike any of the Pokemon on the list. Except maybe Stantler. They're just the Pokemon that before I made the list were the least likely to come to mind when remembering a Pokemon. Although they won't be anymore since I just talked about them all. Anyway, if you have made it to this part of the video, thanks so much for watching. Also, if there's any Pokemon that you think I might have forgotten about, please comment them. I have some other videos planned for the future, including some that I've already made, so if you want to be notified for when they're ready to watch, you can subscribe if you want to. But until next time, thanks again so much for watching.